You have to recognize that when the word is sown, Satan's going to come immediately to try and steal it. And he'll try and do it at the point of you hearing it. No man is my judge, only God Almighty. And so I rejoice. What am I doing? I'm staying in that word. So you're bypassing, you're walking through that field of persecution, and you come out in the 30-fold, 60-fold, and the 100-fold. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. This is Alan Bagg. We are having a look this week at victory over tribulation and persecution. Jesus said it's impossible that offense would not come. Hey, listen, we've all, we've all encountered offense somewhere in our lives. And so when it does come, it's how we deal with it. See, that offense is going to happen. It's going to rise up. But I refuse to be offended. And how can I overcome that? Well, the Word of God gives us great insight to understand that even when tribulation things happen to us, persecution, when people come against us, whatever the devil tries to use to bring offense, I can attack it and come against that offense and put it down and have victory over it. We're going to have a look at that this week. Enjoy it. I'll see you later. So you pray in the Spirit. Let that heart be loosened up. And then he says, verse 16, these likewise, in other words, this is also still the enemy at work. This is similar. Those who are sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. So they're going, yes, amen, I get it, hallelujah. But they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Now listen to this. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for thee, for thee, for the what? The word say. It says yeah, afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake. We think when people come against us and say things to us, they're after me. They don't like me. I've had people open blatantly, I do not like that man. Well, it's not me you don't like. If you got to know me, you would love me. <laughs> How can you not like me if we've never met? Why are you saying I don't like that man? It's not for me. It's the Word's sake. I fully see that. I fully, that's what he says here. The enemy comes for the Word's sake. So when people start calling you names, start criticizing you, start mocking you, it's not you that they're attacking. Even if it's somebody that's close to you. Even Jesus, when he went back to his own hometown, I mean, you can be, imagine he's excited, he's, he's been anointed, he's traveling from town to town, delivering the word, healing, miracles are happening. Man, let me go take this home. And he arrives home in his hometown. Ha-ha, I'm back. Let me show you what God's doing through my life. And they looked at him and said, yeah, but we know your brother and father and sisters. So? What's that got to do with the anointing? Is this not the carpenter's son? And the Bible says he could do no mighty work there. That's Jesus. You seeing this? So family of God, that's exactly what the enemy is doing. He's after you for the word's sake, not because of you. I want you to get that. I, I'm, I will, I'll take the next 10 minutes and say it over and over and over again. If you can just renew your mind. When somebody mocks you because of your faith, or criticizes the church you go to, or questions what you believe, it's not you they have a problem with. 
And even if they say something about your pastor, and they say, oh, I heard about your pastor, it's not got anything to do with me. It's for the word's sake. What the, what's the enemy trying to do? Use people and use circumstances to destroy this word. Now, how does he succeed? If this works in this person's life, how does it succeed? It says, immediately they stumble. In other words, when he throws that at this type of soil, then what happens is they stumble. Now, the New King James, when they say stumble, it sounds like you kind of trip. But if you look at the original root word, if you look in the King James Version, it says they're offended, which is a more accurate translation because the word used for stumble there is the Greek word skandalizo. Skandalizo. Now, I'm not Greek, so please forgive me if my pronunciation is off. Skandalizo. But if you want to write it down, S K A N. D-A-L-I-Z-O. The root is scandalon. And the scandalon is a trap stick or a bait stick. A trap stick or a bait stick. In other words, it's what's used to trap an animal. I don't know if you saw a movie by Jamie Ace a number of years ago where they show how they trap a baboon is they use, there is a knot in the tree, just big enough for the baboon to put his hand in, and so they put a piece of food in there, and as they put the hand in and grab the food, it causes a fist, now he can't get his hand out, the, out of the hole. And they showed how, with him like that, the hunter then goes to that baboon and will club that baboon to death while he's holding on to his food. Now, he's technically not trapped. Because if he lets that food go, he can run away. Hello? Puts his hand in, food, grabs it, takes it, can't get away. Here comes the hunter, and he's, and he's screaming, wah, wah, wah. hunter's coming. All he has to do is let the food go. Just let it go. Just let it go. You can run away. And that's what the devil does. Puts his little bit of Tribulation, persecution, call you names, whatever. And we go, now we are offended. How dare they? Who do they think they are? And that, from that moment on, that person doesn't even have to say anything ever again. The devil will beat you up with thoughts of how dare they, and they shouldn't, and do they know, and why don't I, and before you know it, I wonder, yeah, but how can they say that, and I, and then you go YouTube, and you go blah, blah, and you get all the junk, and you go, maybe it's wrong, maybe it is wrong, maybe it is bad, oh, now, now, now I'm offended with my teacher, because he taught me this stuff, and because he taught it, this person's against me, and what if this person, and what are and the devil's clubbing the person to death, what's happened? They are drained of faith. The word they went, yes, hallelujah, on Sunday is now the word they're upset with. And the devil's clubbing the person to death. And all they have to do is say, I forgive you. You just have to let it go. Yeah, but I heard you. No, let me, I understand. I understand where you're coming from, I was there as well. I also used to think the things you think. But let me show you what the Word says. Well, I don't agree with that. Okay, I just need to pray for you more. I love you still. Amen? Amen. Amen. Realize it's got nothing to do with you. Let it go. Let it go. And you're standing on a healing scripture, and the pain intensifies. Ah, where's Jesus? He's supposed to heal me. How come? No, let it go. Father, I don't care what my body feels like. I don't care where. I, I, I'm not. I know you healed me. I'm standing confident in that word. Come on, can I get a bigger amen? amen. How are you getting something here tonight? Is this helping you? Now, notice the problem here in verse 17. Why did this happen? It's because they had no root in themselves, they had no root. Everybody say no root. Now, keep your mark, yeah, because we're coming back. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. Paul prays, yeah, and verse 17, he says that Christ may dwell in your hearts. 
Who is Christ? The anointed one. So when we refer to the anointed one, we're also referring to his anointing. So let this anointing of the anointed one dwell in your hearts. How? Through faith. What is faith? Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So even if someone points out something that's not in your life, you go, yeah, that's faith. I still believe God's Word to be true, even though I don't see it yet. 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 Okay. So now I'm rooted and says here yeah, that you've been rooted. Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you've been rooted and grounded in love. See, he said they had no root in themselves. Rooted and grounded in love. Family, if you allow the love of God, I'm not talking about eros, the, the human weakness, you know, that's just loving people because you feel good, or even phileo, which is a friendship love. I'm talking about agape, that God, God is love. God that can look at me, who blasphemed his name and was angry against him, angry against his church, angry against anybody who dared to come and try to preach to me. And he still reached through all of that and got a hold of me. That if I am rooted and grounded in that love, I can have somebody spitting in my face with anger and vile that they hate me and they want to say something to me and it doesn't even cause me to flinch. Because I realize you're not coming against Alan Bay. It's the Word. And he is fully able to stand for himself. God doesn't have to defend his Word. And if he doesn't have to defend his Word, neither do I. And I tap into his love. And I can love you, doesn't matter what you think of me or say about me or do to me. You could be good or bad. I do, that, none of that influences my love. Why? Because it's his love. Rooted, grounded in his love, you will comprehend, verse 18, with all the saints, what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lift your hand and say, I am rooted. I'm grounded in love. I know how much God loves me. It is the love of Christ. I know the love of Christ. It passes knowledge. It fills me with all the fullness of God. And when I am rooted and grounded in love, no tribulation, no persecution can come against me in Jesus' name. You believe that? You believe that? Hallelujah. This makes you like Teflon, man. Nothing sticks on you. People can throw what they want. Things can happen. I know what it's like when I was a young Christian. First time I stood on a scripture for healing. I got more sick than I ever felt in my life before. Now, I didn't get this point yet. I hadn't studied this in detail. And I got to a point where I, I was one day just reading through, the, going through all my healing scriptures had them all highlighted, going to them, reading it out. And I was halfway through that, and my throat was getting more and more sore because as I spoke, it hurt more. And that got me even more angry. <laughs> like I'm supposed to be getting better, yeah. yeah. And I started, I'm, 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 God says, speak the word. I can hardly ever speak what you want me to speak. <laughs> I'm supposed to speak what I'm speaking. And eventually I slammed the Bible and said, God, you said... Now, I know none of you have ever done this. I'm just talking about me right now. And eventually, when you get all that rant out, 
God looks at you and you just hear it in his voice. Are you done? And he taught me and showed me that my feelings do not determine the success of the word. And I just rested. I said, well, Father, there's the word. You said it. I don't care how I feel. And I went back to the word and started praying in the spirit. And God started revealing things in my life that I needed to correct. And I corrected them within 24 hours. Boom, that thing turned. And I was totally restored. Come on, give Jesus praise if you're getting this. So what am I saying? If you're rooted and grounded in love, you rest in that love. Amen. No matter what happens in your life, just let God be God, let His Word be His Word, and rest in it. I don't need to prove it to anybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Come and have a look at Mark. Go back to Mark chapter 4. So Jesus went down, and we're going to bypass the, 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 the part where he talks about the riches and all that, lust for other things. Look at verse 20. These are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word. Those who accept the word. Those who bear fruit from the word. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100-fold. Hallelujah. So get a hold of this. You have to recognize that when the word is sown, Satan's going to come immediately to try and steal it. And he'll try and do it at the point of you hearing it. But if that doesn't work, he says, that's fine. You hallelujah about the word. He's going to hit you with tribulation and persecution. But if you stay rooted and grounded in love and you take the word and you receive it, yes, Father, that is what I heard on Sunday is your word. I'm choosing to walk in it. And the devil says, yeah, but what about your bank account? I don't care about my bank account. My account's in heaven and he abundantly provides. Yeah, but what about that pain in your body? He bore that away on the cross. He took that. Yeah, but it's been five months. I don't care how long it's been. He took it and he destroyed it and I'm walking in the fullness of God's word. Yeah, but what about your neighbor that's saying things? I don't care what they say. I only answer to Jesus. I have to stand before him one day and him look at me and say, well done good and faithful servant. No man is my judge, only God Almighty. And so I rejoice. What am I doing? I'm staying in that word. So you bypassing, you walking through that field of persecution, and you come out in the 30-fold, 60-fold, and the 100-fold. Now you see the Word begin to bear fruit. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, these things start to show up, and you see the happening and the manifestation. What He said would happen, happens. And you look back at that and say, all the lies of the devil that told me this wouldn't work, look at that now. And you notice all the people that had something to say, you don't hear from them anymore. They don't come say, oh, we apologize, we didn't... Re that's fine, you just keep praying for them. Amen. But that's how I have seen the hundredfold show up in my life. Because I refuse to let anything... Stop me from getting there. That's something, I, I just gotta, you got to get this. That the family of God, sometimes people look at me and I'm the pastor and I teach these things because that's, you know, that's what I do as a pastor. No, you must understand, for me to get here, I went through exactly what you're going through. Still, today, even at a, at a more intense level. But what I have learned is I never gave up. Amen. Amen. And it's that not giving up is where you see the results. And so when you see one person that failed because of it, and you see another one succeeds because of the word, then you understand the differences now. Hallelujah. Now, how do you want to be this 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold area? So Matthew chapter 5, we'll close on this. Verse 10, remember Jesus was busy teaching the, what we call the Beatitudes. We did that as a series recently. If you missed that, make sure you get that series. We went through the Beatitudes in detail. And he got down here to verse 10. He said, blessed are those who are persecuted 
for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. It's not you. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceedingly great. Why? For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hallelujah. Heavenly God, what's Jesus saying? That when these things happen, just step back out of it. Don't let it get on you. Lift your hand and say, praise God, I am blessed. Blessed. What does blessed mean? Empowered to prosper. God's spoken word in you will manifest. Why? Because he watches over his word to perform it. And when he sees somebody step up and say, God, I believe you are God and I believe your word because your word is yes and amen. And I believe you watch over your word to perform it. And I believe you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. That gets God's attention. That's what pleases him. And he says, let me show myself strong on his behalf. Hallelujah. And God will use you as a demonstration of His goodness. And no matter what you've gone through, how bad things looked, you came out the other end blessed. Hallelujah. And that is a testimony to others around you. Glory to God. Jesus did say in this world you will have tribulation. Jesus also said that we would come face to face with offense. Usually when problems happen, it's because you don't know the solution. But Jesus also taught us how to overcome the enemy's tactics. The good news is that God prepares us. He prepares us in the Word of God. In this series, Alan Bagg shows that even though we will be challenged in the area of tribulation and persecution, God has already given us the victory. How many of you want to advance in the kingdom of God? How many you want to be an authority? Now he says, yeah, it's all determined by how you respond to situations. He will show us how to overcome offense. Know how to deal with it when it arrives. It's not if, it's when. And how to live a victorious life, fulfilling the plan and vision that God has for our lives. Now God does give us promises. But those promises are to get us through the situation, not to switch off everything in your life. Get your series and walk in victory over persecution and tribulation. I love you too much to just preach a whoop whoop message and leave you without the tools to be able to handle when things go awry. Purchase your series online or by contacting Allen Back Ministries at any of these details. I am unoffendable. Hallelujah. That's a good confession. Amen. That's the way I want to live, and I'm sure you do too. Now, I know the devil's always throwing stuff at us. I know what it's like. He comes against us. Things are happening. People are happening. He wants to get us into offense. That's one of his primary attacks. But thank God we have the Word of God. And that's why I want to encourage you, get hold of this series. Because what happens is by listening to it, you preparing yourself. You're becoming skilled in the Word of God. Next time something comes to try and get you offended, you can say, excuse me, I know where this is coming from and I know what it's trying to do. I won't allow it. And you will have that victory. Now, how's that possible? By taking this, listening to it over and 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 over until it becomes literally seeps out of you. And that's the way to walk as a Christian, untouchable where the enemy is concerned. And so make sure you get yours today. Amen. Now, no matter what has happened in your life, no matter what attacks have come against you, you can still stand strong. And I know right now you are facing something. I want to pray for you. I'm going to come into agreement. Father, I thank you for my dear friend. I know that the devil tried to take them down, but I do know this. You are for them who can be against them that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Any tongue that rises, we condemn it. Satan, you hear that? You are bound in the name of Jesus. Stop and cease and desist with your attacks in that home. I resist you and you flee. Father, I pray that you give my dear friend strength. 
build and strengthen them in the inner man, that the anointed one fill their hearts through faith. They are rooted and grounded in love, and they comprehend that love, and that, Lord, they are now untouchable where the enemy is concerned. I call them blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, listen, things are going to happen. We're going to see. You know that was God. That is God in action. That is His hand. And I want you to write to me. Let me know your testimonies. There's the details on the screen. Either send us an email or something. But let me know. I'd love to share it with others, how God has touched and changed your life through these broadcasts. Well, we're going to get together again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Were they called to equip believers to flourish in their ministries? Alan and Janine Bagg are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church, one church in many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Alan and Janine Bagg invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence for faith-building messages from God's uncompromised Word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God. Wherever you're able to, join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're nowhere near any of our locations, feel free to participate in our services by joining us online at alanbagministries.org. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at alanbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.